the Premier of the Northwest Territories is calling for clarity on federal assistance. I was guaranteed by the Prime Minister that they would put a priority on making sure that we were safe and that we got the supports we needed. I didn't say financial supports, in fairness, but I will be. Uh, this is going to be a large bill and we are going to need financial help going forward. So this is a cause that I am not letting go of. Rajit Sajjan is the Federal Minister of Emergency Preparedness. We have reached him in Vancouver. Hello there, Minister. Uh, you know what, let's, let's get right to that question of money because it is one that has been front and central today. I have heard you say that the federal government will be there to support uh, provinces and territories, but can you explicitly say to Premier Cochran that the money she is looking for right now she is going to get? Well, first of all, I want to say that the federal government will be there at all uh, phase of the uh, the emergency. In fact, actually, when it comes to the recovery piece, I've uh, spoken to Minister Thompson um, actually just recently uh, on a number of occasions to remind him of the, what the recovery process is, the disaster uh, financial assistance uh, arrangement. Um, and we know that uh, because of the challenge that Northwest Territory and the, their leadership has right now, because they're cha uh, dealing with the wildfires, we we're, um, uh, we're actually uh, have uh, sent teams to help them uh, with some of that process and uh, that uh, paperwork, just so that they know that uh, the federal government will be there for the recovery as well. Okay, so when she says, well, I'm not letting go of this issue, I just want to be crystal clear, your answer is, you got nothing to worry about, we're going to be there? Absolutely. In fact, actually, what's one message I wanted to send right from the beginning, um, and be, because at, very on the early days, you want to make sure that we focus on the support uh, for the evacuation, supporting for the for the uh, uh, for the forest fires, and they did an amazing job during that time. I remember talking to Minister Thompson, um, where we, he said, "No, things are okay. We're not going to be calling an emergency." And things shifted so quickly, and, and he called me two hours later uh, that they needed to evacuate. And in, uh, because of the anticipatory work that uh, we have been working with them so closely, the evacuation was done. And as that was going on, what we try to do is anticipate what are the next steps. So for example, there's still a lot of work to do to making sure that Yellowknife and some of the other communities like Fort Smith are, um, are gonna be protected. Mm -hmm. um, we're at the same time looking at the planning, uh, not only uh, what the return would look like, um, but also the recovery as well to making sure that they know the process uh, um, so they can have the financial support. In terms of the, you mentioned the return, and I mean, Yellowknife, I think, is a particular case, obviously, uh, because the whole capital was evacuated and because it is such an effort to get that many people out. Is caution needed in terms of when people return? I mean, it would be so hard to get them out again. Do, do, are people going to have to be prepared to stay away for, for quite some time to ensure that the situation is completely well, dealt with? Very yeah, you raise a very good point, and this is one thing that the the Northwest Territory themselves, their, their government, will decide on mm -hmm. when it is safe to return. Um, and because we've had some breathing space right now, not just in in BC but also in the Northwest Territories, during my morning uh, update uh, today, I was speaking to our officials uh, to making sure that we were looking at uh, if there's any type of resource that we need to push even further so that during this breathing space, they have the resources to build uh, the fire breaks, making sure the, the, the water can and the sprinklers are put into place, and what anything else that the firefighters might need to do to making sure that, to use this time uh, effectively uh, as, as possible how, so that they could be safe. Yeah, I, I just wonder how you think about this moment and sort of where we find ourselves in the bigger picture. Like, I, I appreciate that you can't weigh in on the specific decisions that have yet to be made of particular governments. But as the Minister for Emergency Preparedness, we're in the midst of this unprecedented wildfire season. The season is not over. How, how should we understand, like, uh, should Canadians basically buckle up for, for weeks upon weeks of, of more of this? I think it's not just about weeks. It is what we have seen is year after year, climate-induced emergencies have taken place, whether it's wildfires um, or floods. This is something that we have seen uh, earlier on, and when you go back to 2015 when we formed government, the consultations that, we, um, that I was doing in, in defense at that time, uh, we knew that there were going to be more domestic operations support. That's why we put in our defense policy. But even then, the, the emergencies have increased, uh, the forest fires increased, and this is why the Prime Minister uh, created its own emergency for emergency preparedness okay. to work with the provinces and territories okay. to take a look at and put all the right resources in place m moving into the future. Well, so speaking of resources, um, I also had a conversation with a representative from the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs and what 
he is saying, and what in fact they have been saying for, for months, if not longer, is that what they need is a, a more uh, substantial tax credit for volunteer firefighters who are doing so much of this work. Why has that not been acted upon? I mean, it's only what they're asking for. It's $3,000 right now. They'd like to see it go up to 10. Given the massive amounts of money being spent, that it doesn't seem like an enormous ask. Why hasn't it happened yet? Well, first of all, I want to take this opportunity to thank all the firefighters for the amazing work that they're doing all across uh, this country. And this is one issue that we'll, um, I will be raising. I'll be talking not just this, but some of the other um, initiatives that we're also uh, working on. Uh, we want to make it uh, as flexible as possible for, for, for the volunteer fighter fires to do the work. But also, we also have a lot of search and rescue capabilities that's also across the country. So this is the work that we're doing right now with the provinces and territories, looking at with the capacity that we have and how can we integrate that even more? Where, the, where, do, the, where do the resources need to go? So, uh, so, so, sorry, Minister, but, but how long does it take to make that decision? Because I, I had a, a similar conversation actually with the chief. I, I'm going to say it was in June and I thought, well, the federal government says it's engaged. They're making the, the noises that suggest something is going to happen on this. It hasn't happened yet. So, so what would you say to those volunteer firefighters who are hoping they're going to get more help from the financial government. How long is that well, decision going to take? As I said, not just this, but we're looking yeah. at other initiatives as well. And we want to make sure that we have a comprehensive package. And uh, we'll be working with the uh, uh, the different uh, firefighter associations um, on this, working with the leadership that, at the provinces and territories, just so that we not only get that initiative right. And this is one of the things that we've listened to also in the past by putting enough funding in for a thousand uh, new firefighters, making mm -hmm. sure that we have more firefighters that are trained on interface fires who can deal with uh, structural fires as well. So this work will continue and making sure that the right people get okay. the support. Okay, I I'm not sure I did hear a, a when there, but I want to ask you about one other issue, Minister, which is uh, we also, another issue that Chief McMullen raised, and we're going to have that conversation coming up later in the show, is coordination, that they'd like someone sort of at the, the, the top of the pile uh, coordinating all these efforts across the country. Will there be action on that? So one is the coordination actually is taking place and we're going to be looking at where we need to do better coordination. So the Government Operations Center right now does the coordination across uh, the country. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of work that goes behind this. And this is one of the reasons why we've had an effective response all across the country. When you see um, challenges that are bouncing from province to territories, even across the country, we're able to shift the resources. And this is something that we'll continue to do to figure out exactly where the resources need to go um, to show so that we can not only have a robust response, and but I also I want to emphasize we need to start looking also on the prevention side, which is a mitigation and yep. adaptation. Okay, that's going to be very important as well. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but that is definitely a conversation that we're going to want to continue to have. We'll we'll certainly have you back on the show sometime to talk about that. Thank you for your time today. Great, thank you.